Alrighty, so now we're reaching the final part for this week, which is about to make sure the refined system M1, the refinements, can actually establish the invariance upon its launch. That's basically what we want to do. Similar to how we make sure the uh, initial abstract model also establish the abstract invariance upon its launch. Similar idea. So that's why we don't need to repeat many details over here. But I'll still include it in the slides. You can definitely still review them for uh, completeness. But let me just highlight uh, what you should really watch out for. Okay. So we have so far discharged the uh, 12 sequence, right? Remember 10 of them is really about the concrete invariants being preserved by ML out and also ML in. We got five concrete invariant conditions and two concrete invariants. So that's why two times five, we got 10 over here. And also we make sure the concrete guards for the two concrete events entail or imply their abstract counterparts, meaning that the concrete guards are actually stronger. And we got two sequence for the second one, right? So in total, we got 12. Make sure you know how to state, uh, how you can, uh, how, make sure you, how to, uh, you know how to formulate uh, these two 12 sequence and also how you can discharge them. We actually uh, have done in detail uh, several of them already. But of course, several of them was uh, were also left as exercises for you. But you should also try to tr uh, prove and formulate the other ones as well. And let's now talk about initialization. And of course, for the concrete, we call this the concrete init events, which will initialize all the uh, concrete variables, A, B, and C. And it definitely makes sense. Initially, we simply have no traffic flow from the mainland to the island. And also we have no traffic flow from the island to the mainland. And also we have no cars in the island, right? Something like that. So that would be, uh, oh, beg your pardon. So we have no traffic from mainland to island. We have no traffic from island to mainland. And also we have no cars in the island, right? That's basically what each variable represents. Initially, we just got none for each one of them, right? So that's something, uh, yeah, exactly what we said. No cars on the bridge heading to either way and also the island, right? Exactly what I just said. And the guard is simply true. So always remember for the init event, it's always unconditional, no guards, guard free. And there's no pre-state for the init. It simply doesn't make sense for the init events to have any uh, pre-state. We only got a notion of post-states. And so that's why the right-hand side, well, this is just repeating what we said before. So the right-hand side for the uh, becomes operator over here, should, all, should not involve any variables. Uh, it only involve constants or literals, as we said before. Only post-state event, and the before after predicate will be A prime equals zero, B prime equals zero, and also C prime equals zero. Over here, we're gonna need the before after predicate for when we formulate a sequence. We're gonna need that in just a moment. And how do we uh, formulate the proof obligation? And we'll need some formal components, right? And for the formal components, we already spoke about them uh, as well earlier. We're introducing some new one, but very similar ones. Let me just go over that, right? We said before about the effects for the abstract init actions. You can refer back to the earlier part when we talk about invariant uh, initialization for the abstract model, we simply call it K over here, right? So for example, we only got one uh, variable to be initialized. It will be initialized to be zero. And we'll talk about the before after predicate before, right? So this part here is completely uh, not new, right? That's something we learned uh, earlier. And we got two symmetric ones in the concrete world. So we got, you can see, you can see L alphabetically follows K. So L, it will be the effects for the concrete version of INITS. In that case, A will become zero, B will become zero, and C will become zero. Similar to how we specify the effects for the uh, concrete events, right? That's what we did earlier. So I don't need to illustrate this. It's quite straightforward. And also uh, the W prime equals L, uh, the effects will be the before after predicate. A prime equals zero, and also B prime equals zero, and etc. right? And informally, what we want to do is we don't have any invariants uh, as to be assumed in the pre-state. There's simply no pre-state. All we can assume will be that just the axiom about the constant. And we want to make sure the concrete invariants Will, will be satisfied at the post states with the effects of the uh, concrete init events applied. That's something we'll uh, exercise together, right? So this will be the proof obligation over here, right? Let's now switch to iPad and let's talk about it, okay? So these are the two uh, components that are very important about the effects for the abstract version versus the concrete version for the init events. 
right? That's a proof obligation for the invariant establishment. And it's very similar to what we said earlier about the invariant establishment for the initial model. But now we, uh, what, what we want to is to establish instead, it's not the abstract invariance, but instead we want to establish the concrete invariance in the context of refinements, right? So how many proof obligation do we need for the concrete model? Well, it depends on how many invariant conditions you have, right? So since we got this one here, we got this one here, we got five in total. We got five invariant conditions. So that means Ji over here could be one, uh, could be one or two or three or four or five, right? So it just depends on the number of concrete invariance conditions. In our case, it will be five. So in total, we should really get five different uh, in the, uh, five different sequence for this, right? And let's uh, go back to the slides, right? How many sequence do we prove, right? Number of concrete variant, there'll be five in our case, right? And we only uh, show you two of them. Let me see which two do I want to show. Okay, let's say we want to see invariant number four and also invariant number five. Let's say we want to make sure these two concrete invariants are actually established. And I will show you exactly how we derive this guy over here, right? The way we derive this is, is very similar to how we did it in the invariant preservation. We got to think about the post states. Let me just show you once more, just in case, okay? So what we want to do is we're going to actually uh, talk about two sequence, init events, and then invariance one, four. And we talk about invariance establishment. Another one, also the init events, invariance number five, and also to do with invariant establishment, right? The axiom is going to be, uh, I, I'm not in, oh, actually I do have it over here. Axiom, these are the two axiom, right? Axiom one, axiom two. So that'll be D is a natural number and also D positive, the same as the other one. D is a natural number and also D larger than zero. You can think about for the remaining three sequence will be exactly the same uh, for their hypothesis. And what about the goal over here? It's going to be the concrete invariance, right? In this case, we're going to get invariant number four, right? Let me do the similar exercise that we did earlier over here. I'm gonna put, oh, actually, I might need a bigger box. Let's say one will be here, and the other one will be over here. Let's say, right? Let me say this is star, this is star star, right? We want to make sure it actually, uh, the concrete invariance will be satisfied at the post states, right? So that's about the post states. Concrete invariance and we want to make sure the effects for the init event in the abstract version and also the effects for the concrete version for the init events they are both can be substituted properly right let me just uh, say that so this will be the effects oh actually you know what I don't need to repeat because you can simply look it up can you can you not KC over here LC over here, exactly what, what they're supposed to mean. I don't need to write it down, all right? Let's now work out the star and star star, right? Like how we did it before for completeness. For the star, so we are talking about invariant number four. Invariant number four is over here. So we are talking about post states. A prime plus B prime plus C prime equals M prime, right? And if you actually go back to the init, uh, init event for the abstract model, we simply got a before after predicate m prime equals zero, right? I'm just going to replace it right away, right? You can look it up just to confirm. What about the abstract, uh, about the concrete version? In that case, we got, this is the concrete version for the init events. Before after predicates, as we said, a prime equals zero and b prime equals zero and c prime equals zero, right? A prime, zero, B prime, zero, C prime is zero, right? So what we got is something that seems to be very trivial, but you still need to prove it. So we got zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. Zero plus zero plus zero equals zero, right? It's obvious, I know, but anyway. And let's see uh, the next one. Star, star. Typically, initialization, 
uh, should be quite easy to prove for invariant establishment, typically. Okay? If you cannot prove it, most likely it's because your model may be wrong. Start, start. Uh, that would be about invariant number five for init, still the same events. Invariant number five is here, right? In the post states, a prime equals zero or c prime equals zero, right? And we can do the same replacement, a prime and c prime. A prime should be replaced by zero, c prime should be replaced by zero. So that means we got zeros equals zero or zeros equals zero, right? These are the two sequence. I would suggest at least you will try to prove them. I know they sound, uh, they seem trivial, but even for the tr uh, most trivial sequence, they, they still deserve some sound proof, okay? Let me now just uh, assign an exercise to you, okay, over here. And try not to look at the slides right now because the slide does contain a solution. I really want you to try to see if you can really prove it, prove them, both of them. So these are the two relevant uh, inference rule as a big hint about how you may prove them. But let me just uh, write, write it down. It should be an exercise for you. Exercises, we got two. You should be able to prove them rather easily, but make sure you apply the inference rule properly. And once you're done with your exercise over here, you can go back to the slides and see how you should look like, okay? Right, let me now go back over here. And basically we're done, right? So this week we actually covered quite many items. Specifically, we walk you through the entire process about proving refinements. There's, all, there's still one part which we haven't covered yet, but that will be for the next week, which is about when we introduce any new events in the uh, refinement model, what are we supposed to prove about the new events? That's something we'll cover in week number seven. All right, stay tuned, study hard, enjoy your study actually for uh, this week's material and reach out to me if you got any trouble. I'll see you next week.